Hello and welcome back to another HW Aquascaping video. Today we're going to be looking at the complete series for the Baryonyx River and seeing how the nice quirky scape that it once was has become the absolute mess that it is right now. Hope you enjoy. Today is going to be a little bit of a fun scape to make. Um, just something a little bit different basically because uh, uh, I don't think I've seen anything like this out there at the moment so hopefully it'll give you guys some inspiration. Um, so what we're going to be escaping today is actually the Dua Neoglass Air and this is the 30cm uh, by 18 by 12 um, which is I believe the dimensions, I know it's 30cm long um, which I purchased from Scape Nature so shout out to them uh, brilliant shop, uh, I'd definitely give it a check out um, if you can, uh, they do online or um, I think at the moment it is um, appointment only in shop sales but I ordered this online it came within a couple of days all perfectly packaged no damage um, so can't fault them and it is a beautiful tank um, the doer um, is actually made of OptiWide glass as well so um, it should be a really nice scape when I'm done so for hardscape I'm gonna keep it really simple it's just gonna be this piece of wood um, I, I think with the tank being as small as it is one sort of like focal point hardscape will sort of just add nicely to the scape as you can see you've got area to plant down the back and it leaves a nice open foreground as such to place our uh, special surprise which uh, you'll see later on um, but yeah obviously the piece of wood's really nice it's got a big hole in the middle so I can put some plants in there I can put plants all over the wood, plants at the back um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put some of this, which is the JBL um, Volcano Mineral. It's basically just crushed up lava rock, essentially, into like little sorts of um, small chippings. Um, it's really good stuff, obviously. It's going to help um, provide some home, really, to uh, for sort of bacteria, um, which will be able to help keep the water nice. Because I'm going to try and see if it's possible to do a non-filtered fish tank. I'm not promising anything but hopefully if it does work uh, with the plants and everything I'll be able to uh, have just a couple of fish in here just to make it uh, look really nice but uh, yeah as you see I'm just going to put some of this down the back area. Um, it's also basically just to raise it up as well so it's going to create a nice uh, area for the plants to uh, plant into um, as well as keep it all nice and contain you see just scoop it away from the glass and make sure it's all nice and wedged in um, uh, I don't think I use that much actually in this uh, scape it's um, it's generally uh, just sort of a small portion in the back um, and I mean to be honest the bags aren't even that expensive to buy anyway I think um, they range from about sort of nine quid to eleven quid uh, depending on where you're getting them from um, so uh, it's it's not too bad at all, and you you do get quite a lot um, inside the bag. So um, yeah, I, I, you know I'm uh, I've never used this product before, so I'll uh, give you updates either on my Instagram or on here if you want to uh, know any more. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, there you go. There you can see is the little mounds that I put at the back. I've also put a little bit in the hole in the wood as well, um, just to basically keep. Um, the wood in place uh, whilst I'm putting the soil and everything in. Um, I have already tested the piece of wood um, to see if it sinks. I just dropped it in my freshwater reef aquarium and it sank straight away so um, I'm quite happy with that uh, because the one that I'm going to be using for the um, new shrimp tank, uh, even though it's a much bigger piece, it uh, floated, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, so um, I'm really happy that this piece sank straight away. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of aqua soil. So I'm going to use my trusty jug and just pour a little bit onto the back and uh, keep on doing this until uh, the back is basically filled. Um, as far as we can go up to the top, I don't want to go too high with it. Um, but um, my aim is to sort of have um, some of the plants growing um, immersed. So they'll be growing out of the water as well as in the water. Um, and then I'm going to have a lot of uh, submerged plants sort of uh, just dotted around the piece of wood. Um, and uh, yeah, so this aquasol is the JBL shrimp soil as usual. So we don't want too many nutrients uh, leaching into the water because all it'll do is cause algae, especially in a non-filtered aquarium. Um, from the research I've been doing, you don't really want to use a lot of um, high nutrient substrates um, 
because basically you want your plants to um, essentially filter the water and if there's too many nutrients it's until they can get growing um, they're not going to do too well um, so if you get algae in there um, it's basically just going to be keep on restarting the process because we can't really do big water changes on this tank either um, otherwise that will upset the balance with there being no filter as well so it's um, it's definitely going to be a bit of a uh, nice experiment for me but um, but yeah, um, I'll get some sand now in, um, which this is, um, what I'm using is um, Aqua Substrate um, from Mainland Aquatics. Um, it's generally my local shop that I tend to go to, um, as you probably already know. Um, this is a new sand they've actually got, uh, which they call Riverbed Sand. So considering the name of this tank, I thought it'd be quite a, a fitting substrate to use. Um, and it's actually quite nice. It's a, it's a really coarse sand um, from what I'm used to using. Um, it's uh, it's generally uh, a lot uh, lighter in colour as well. It's like it's really natural sand, but the coarseness of it makes it a really nice texture to like sort of observe in the tank, and I think it'd be quite fitting uh, to actually use. So um, yeah, I'm actually quite intrigued um, to see after a while what happens with the sand generally, because I, uh, from what I've used in the past, light coloured sand generally is a haven for algae. Um, so um, obviously with there being no fish um, possibly going in this I'd be interested to see how this fares um, in terms of algae because in my freshwater reef aquarium um, as you know I've got white sand which um, is generally staying quite white um, and that's because obviously I've got quarries um, I've got whiptail catfish I've got uh, coolie loaches snails, shrimps uh, so they're all ploughing through um, and turning over the sand, um, which is uh, making that um, obviously staying algae free um, as such. So uh, I'll be interested to see what this sand actually looks like. But as you can see, just pouring the sand around, making sure it's sort of wedging the wood in place. I'm putting it sort of banked up at the back um, and towards the wood, um, as well as a nice, really thin layer in the front because obviously we're not going to need much substrate in the front because there's going to be no plants in the sand. So I uh, just spreading it out a bit uh, just so we can see and then uh, yeah banking it up at the back and there we go. <laughs> so that is basically the foreground as you can see looks really nice looks like a nice riverbed with sort of like a you know fallen tree or something you know that's fallen over in a storm or something like that. Um, I don't really know it's you know create the story for the escape really um, but uh, but there's our riverbank uh, where the plants are going to be planted uh, but all we need now is just a bit of uh, detailing. Um, so the detailing I'm going to be using is the same which I used in the Bonsai Scape. Um, that is going to be the Denele uh, Rio Zingu um, gravel. Um, I, I prefer to use this rather than actual like substrate. Um, it's just using it as detailing wood, uh, wood, uh, detailing rocks. Um, so as you can see, just pouring it along the woods just to make it look like this is a river bank so the bigger rocks would collect um, in the dead spot areas as the river's flowing and you'll generally have sort of it'll branch out into the sand and transition really nicely um, so that's like sort of the river bank as such and then you've got the open sand where essentially the water would be flowing if this did have flow in the tank um, but uh, but yeah you know not using that much you know just making sure that up against uh, the wood rather than the glass, you know, try and get it as minimal as possible at the front. Uh, just in case I do have to do any maintenance, it just makes it a lot easier if the rocks aren't touching the glass. But uh, yeah, I'll certainly I'll use the uh, scraper once I've uh, got the majority in uh, and I can wedge them in with my fingers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if anything's touching the front, just grab your uh, sand scraper and just push it back. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, th I really like this gravel. Um, it's not something I've ever used before I started sort of doing YouTube really um, I, I just saw you know a lot of other aquascapers on Instagram and uh, on YouTube using it and I thought you know what I'll give it a try because uh, it does look really good when using it as detail um, and as you can see it's it, it, that, that really is the hardscape done um, it's quite a simple scape um, you know it's just one piece of wood bit of lava stone bit of aqua soil bit of sand and then a bit of detail graveling done really minimalistic um, and uh, you know a really sort of 
affordable scape to do, you know, I mean, you could do this with any uh, scape, and then um, we're moving on to the plants now. So the plants that I'm using are actually from the old bonsai scape, so we've got a mixture of uh, Taxophyllum barberi, or Java moss, um, Anubius nana bonsai, uh, Bacopa caroliniana, and a mixture of Rotala uh, hatra and Rotala rotundifolia. They're basically just taken from the old scape, which is why some of them are looking a bit scraggly, but I'm hoping that uh, they will bounce back, because um, they've basically just been floating around um, the new Denelay cube before I've escaped that, they've just been floating around the surface, so um, not really much I can say on that in terms of quality, but um, I'm hoping that they do um, start growing and that uh, I do know that uh, the Bacopa um, does actually flower uh, once out of water, so that'll be interesting to see if that does uh, flower, and uh, <laughs> here is the surprise, um, if you generally didn't uh, guess by the thumbnail. Uh, this is the Baryonyx River. Um, so, quick backstory is, um, I generally am quite a huge fan of dinosaurs. Um, always have been, uh, since being a little kid. Uh, Favourite films are the Jurassic Park film series. Um, so I thought, you know what, it'd be really fun to mix both my passions together, which is fish keeping, uh, aquascaping, and dinosaurs. So, there is uh, Barry. <laughs> Two to three months after the scape was first set up, I changed the light from the Fluval Plant Nano to the ONF Flat Nano Plus. Um, so moving on now, this is the tank that I want to put it on, which is the Dewar Neo Glass Air, which is uh, basically my Baryonyx River scape. As you can see, the plants have been going a bit mental, but um, as you can see, the emerging plants, especially the Hygrophila Pinifinata, um, and a few of the Rotala and the Picopa as it's coming out, are starting to like crisp up. And that is down to basically the heat that uh, the LED lights kick out are sort of like crisping the leaves um, before they can sort of essentially establish and grow. Um, I've got no algae or anything in the tank, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice if um, the emerging plants didn't look crispy, which is why I'm going to swap the lights today. Um, so uh, yeah, basically what I've done different to the fluval is I can now attach the um, holder at the back. Uh, of the tank, and basically because of the angle of the fluval, uh, I couldn't do that um, before, so it'd be quite nice to actually have it at the back and be able to see sort of all the front of the tank, essentially. Um, but yeah, that's the difference. As you can actually see, the, the height is about double, which uh, I can actually fit my hand underneath it. It does touch the light a little bit, as you can see, I could pull it across, but uh, but yeah, it does actually um, it's double the height uh, of the plants, so um, I'm hoping that uh, this will create some good growth. Now, at the point of sort of editing this video, um, I've actually had this light running for about a month. Um, so as you can see, the color rendition, it makes it sort of more greeny in tone to sort of the more sort of mellowed hue that the fluval gives it. But um, but yeah, I quite like it. And uh, I can definitely say the plants are growing immensely now. Um, so yeah, so big thanks to Horizon Aquatics uh, for getting this out to me quickly. And here we are today, at the absolute complete mess that you saw it at the start of the video. Um, yeah, I've not really got much to say other than I have basically been neglecting the scape for a few months now. Um, it sort of just got to a point where there was like no saving it and I've just sort of just been leaving it to do its own thing. Some plants have been doing okay, like I was really surprised that the Eleocharis at the bottom um, has actually been surviving, considering that there's barely any light getting to it because uh, the floating plants have just gone mad and um, I haven't really been taking them out uh, I've just been letting them do their own thing so they've just been piling up and piling up until I've sort of had no choice but to take them out the um, Hygrophila pinifinata has absolutely gone mental as you can see I've trimmed this about two or three times now 
and it just goes absolutely crazy but I think that was blocking a lot of the light out for the Retala and the Bacopa so that died off uh, the Hydrocotyl did relatively okay but not as okay as it has been in the Asian Peninsula Aquarium so yeah I can't really say much but the escape's sort of done, you know, it's it's just got to this point where I, it's unsalvageable, really. Um, so I've just decided to uh, tear it down, and uh, I've got some new plans for something else uh, in its place. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it whilst it lasted. And, um, yeah, be sure to leave me a, a like and a comment if you want to. And please consider subscribing if you want to see some more exciting projects coming soon to my channel. Uh, cheers for watching guys uh, hope you made it to the end have a good one hope you're all staying safe and uh, I'll catch you in the next video see you later